ज्ञान तिमिरंध से ज्ञानांजना शलाकया चक्षुरोन्मील ये न तस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी इति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिने वाचाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी नमी हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रीयाद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा the age progress is lot of things i had required to adjust <laughs> hari krishna so very happy to be again having this blessed opportunity to speak on this beautiful verses from shrimad bhagavatam a very wonderful chapter about the yadu dynasty retires to prabhash and we all know the background that the demigods are here in speaking to the lord dwarkadish offering wonderful prayers and the purpose of their coming is ultimately to tell the lord that now your wonderful service is done in the next 7th uh, seventh, seventh verse from now uh, they'll be telling the lord as part of their glorification that whatever you needed to do is all all accomplished and now you can again ascend to the to your original abode so here the demigods who are not ordinary personalities uh, we all know that demigods are very very elevated personalities many a times the the sad part is that because we have got the great fortune of of worshiping krishna who is the supreme personality of godhead who is the most evolved understanding of of god as krishna and we have got the great fortune of worshiping krishna but sometimes the the fortune makes us very arrogant you know when somebody is very fortunate for a for a good period of time and if he is not very careful that there could be traces or there could be not traceable lumps of of uh, arrogance if for example somebody is fortunate to really inherit great wealth from his father it is just fortune he has not worked worked on it he just inherited the father's wealth so it is as far as he is concerned it is his fortune that he was born the son of this this person was rich but many a times that fortune is not seen as a fortune but is seen as something that well i deserved it and that the feeling of i deserved it gives rise to arrogance and that's why you see a lot of arrogance with people who have some some opulence many a times more often than uh than less so so many times 
you know, we as devotees have been extremely fortunate, and we all know each other, asking each other internally, we all know that how fortunate we have been. We have not really done anything to really deserve to get what we are getting now. Hmm? And, and because we are the, talking about the highest, obviously it is clearly mentioned that worship of demigods is not the highest. Hmm? Krishna himself says, Kama Aisthaya Sarita Gnana. So he says that, that those who are of low understanding, they go to the demigods, but actually we should all worship Krishna. But that does not undermine the, the position of the demigods as far as we are concerned. From Krishna's perspective, they are in, they may be of lower because they are our servants. But as far as we are concerned, we have 100% nothing, we should have nothing but 100% respect and gratitude and reverence for this very, very special personalities. And when this special personality is speaking, this is an exchange between Krishna and the most elo- eloquent, intelligent personalities of the creation, the demigods. So this, this, this conversation is very special. So we should be really feeling so fortunate that we are, uh, we, we are in a position to really hear them. So with this background of giving utmost respect to the demigods, and because we have respect to demigods, we will have that much more respect to what they speak. If we don't respect a person, we will not respect what he speaks or what she speaks. It's natural. Right? So first of all, before we really go forward, we should really understand how great and wonderful these demigods are. Lord Indra, Lord Brahma, Lord Sh- Varuna, you know, these, these are powerful personalities given very, very special responsibilities by Krishna to perform on a universal platform. And not just powerful managers, but deep, wonderful devotees of the Lord. Not just managers, but devotees. They are all devotees of the Lord. But sometimes mixed. So they are offering these prayers, and in these prayers, again, w- one of the most important uh, uh, principles, the root of Srimad Bhagavatam, the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam, that principle is again repeated, and it gets repeated again and again and again. And what is this principle? The principle of the importance of hearing. And herein, because uh, the, the demigods are natural poets, our devotee will naturally develop uh, the art of poetry. Kavi Dakshamani, one of the tremendous qualities, he is a Kavi. So they are they're describing here that the nectar bearing river of your discussion. What a beautiful description, right? It just uh, clearly gives us a very, very wonderful understanding of what the nourish of the Lord are. The ri- nectar bearing river. I'm sure we have all seen water-bearing rivers and how pleasant they are. How wonderful it is to just take a dip in the crystal clear ambrosial waters of rivers that we have have fortune of seeing. But just imagine if that, riv- that, that river, instead of water, it has nectar. <laughs> just flow, the gush of nectar. And as we will, re- we will speak about the second part of this verse, actually all the holy rivers are actually nectar. Because as the second part they says, it is the nectar bearing rivers and also the re- physical rivers which are actually nectar because they are washing your lotus feet. So they are charnamrit, they are also nectar. But we will discuss in, in the first half of our discussion today about the importance of what is mentioned here, the Sada Suchiha. The people, what they said, that is very significant in the purport. The Prabhupada's disciples say that this is a very significant verse, a word. Sada Suchihi. People who are wanting to get purified. Now, how will we want to get purified? The first thing is that we should understand the, what is our present situation. What is the present situation of the material world? The, the de facto or, or, or rather the default setting of this material world is everything is in due course getting putrefied. 
if you do nothing, it is not that a pure thing will remain pure. But it will slowly but surely get putrefied. Anything you know, whether it is a fresh vegetable, a fresh fruit, or a f- crystal water, or for that matter, our own bodies. Anything. Anything. And we all know that, you know, something which is very, I mean, what is the quality of water which drops as rain? It is fresh, crystal clear. Right? The moment it touches the land, what happens to that water? You have seen the nalas, right? <laughs> it's just that gush of, it becomes dirty. The moment something comes in touch with the material world, for a short period of time, or for a period of time, the quality is not, it is, it is pure, it is, it is putrefying. Interesting English word, purifying and putrefying, opposite words sound similar. The, the, the default setting, it is things are constantly purifying. It is a great, great, great effort required to keep things pure, yes? I mean, you know, you have to have such elaborate arrangements of big, big refrigerators. I mean, if you just keep, uh, keep something, I mean, for a day, a fresh milk from the cow, oh, it is fresh. But just for some time, it is just kept for a day. It is so stinking, you don't, you don't even do anything with it. And you have to make elaborate arrangements to keep it fresh. Isn't it? Whether it is a fruit or a vegetable, a vegetable which gets decayed, it is, it, is, it is a yuck smell. Horrible. You want to, it's just so disgusting. Because the tendency in this material world, my dear friends, it is constantly getting putrefied. Everything gets putrefied because that's the nature of this material world to, to, to make things putrefied. The things lose their freshness. So naturally, our consciousness is also going to be constantly getting putrefied if we do not do something about it on a constant, regular way. Because as we say, it's just the nature of this material world of things getting putrefied. We are in the International Society for Contaminated Consciousness. <laughs> this whole world, if you want to describe. What is this world all about? It's the International Society for Contaminated Consciousness. It's the whole conscience of everybody is putrefied, contaminated. 99% of the discussion, 99% of the interaction, 99% of whatever is happening in this world is causing contamination. Whether the news that you read, the, what you see outside, the smell that you are smelling, is nothing but things which are getting putrefied. You are smelling them, you are hearing them. Sometimes you are tasting them. So what makes us feel that our consciousness will not get purified? It will not get purified. We as devotees, what are we trying to do? Or what are we supposed to do, rather? The only reason why we do what we do throughout our day, throughout our, the months and years that we have been practicing Krishna consciousness, is only one thing. The purpose is to purify our consciousness. Yes? Is, it not, is that not the ultimate purpose of our being in Krishna consciousness? To purify this damn contaminated consciousness that we have come with, which has been contaminated for, for ages? And that's what we do. Chanting Hare Krishna, having darshan or deities is all the activity. But all these activities that we do is ultimately meant to purify our consciousness. But how often are we conscious that we are putrefied beings? That we are contaminated beings? Many a times we are not even conscious. Because when we are conscious, we will act in a particular way. I was just, just remembering a situation. Many times when we go to a crematorium, Right? And then obviously we know that it is, it is a contaminated situation. And then we come to our respective homes or places that we stay. We know, I mean, at least, uh, I'm sure all of us are practicing as, as Vaishnavas and as, that we, we are not supposed to, we are just supposed to straight go and take 
a bath because that is going to remove the contamination. We should not be touching anything. We should not be doing anything. Everything, every, we change Brahmanas, they change their Brahman thread. Everything is contaminated because we are in a contaminated situation. But why? When, because we are so conscious that yes, we have been to a contaminated place, our activities become that much more conscious that yes, I should not be touching. I should not be doing things. Why? Because we are conscious of it. Isn't it? But are we to the same extent conscious every minute to minute? Because the fact is that we are very contaminated beings. Our, our mind, our speech, and everything is very, very contaminated because that is nashta prayeshu abhadreshu. We are filled with abhadra things. Contaminated things are part of us. We, we are harboring all contaminated thoughts. And of course, I don't have to prove Huh? that we are contaminated people. We all know it. I mean, nobody has to prove it. Huh? Because we all know what we think when we are alone. We might be wonderful devotees when we are with people and we are supposed to be that way. But the real challenge of a Krishna consciousness is what we think, what we do when we think we are alone. Or because I am using the word when we think because we are never alone. The super soul is always there. But we think we are alone. And what thoughts we harbor, what desires we harbor, what private desires, what private ambitions we all have, is all there. It is contaminating, my dear friends. That stink of that contaminated things which is lying in our heart is spreading in our actions. It's a stink. It's dirty, smelly. And that spreads. The, the, the stink of contaminated thing is not just localized. It spreads. And the more it gets putrefied, the more it spreads, yes? And the more our heart is filled with abhadra, dirty things. And my dear friend, it's not just for this lifetime. It has been stinking, smelly for millions of lifetimes. It has been getting putrefied. Have you gone to a particular, say you go, I mean, sometimes you get time, you just observe the bandras, that sewage place. That is... The sewage is being there of all over Bombay is being flowing there, and if you analyze it, sometimes I, I do analysis. I, I you know I stopped my car once and I was observing, and because you can't do it from the train, it just passes. But you have to stand and see. There's a there's a huge canal of sewage. It used to be near my house, and you see there, and you observe it. There are layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of of dirt. Dark, dirty substance. The layers of 1960, 1970, 1980. All the dirt which has been collected for the last... You can see those layers. It's there. And the, and the together effort of those layers is that horrible stink. And the disgusting appearance. But it's, it's just open. It's just there so we can see it. The problem is, our heart is not open. People don't see it. But we see it. Because the effect of that dirty heart is, is very clearly palpable. It's, it's, a, it's a medical word, right? Palpable. You can palpable. You can palpable. I mean, what is palpable? You can feel your pulse. It is not there, but you can feel it. Gorang Priya Prabhu, right? Palpable is the word. Huh? Doctor, is, you, you say this is palpable. Palpable means you can feel it. You might not you might not, but you can, palp, you can palpate it. Yes, yes, I can feel it. Yes, they, they, they palpate our abdomen. Yes, there is some swelling in the liver. You can't see it. You may have to go over sonography to see it. But a doctor can know, yes, there is something. So he, what they do is they palpate. So similarly, we can we clearly have a very clear palpable feeling that yes, there is dirt in our heart. And that is why these demigods are saying, there is a need for purification, my dear friends. And many a times, we forget that we are putrefying living entities. Because it is, it, is, it is one thing to purify, but it is another thing to constantly keep on purifying. Because the, as, as we said, if you purify once, doesn't mean that it is purified forever. It will again get decayed and get decomposed and get putrefied again. You need to constantly get purified more and more and more and more. So the two efforts required by a sadhaka, not only to purify your consciousness, but to also 
constantly keep that purified consciousness pure. And there's never an end to how much you can make your consciousness purified because there is constantly small leakages of contamination coming. I mean, I'm using the word leakages in a very, very, uh, you know, the least affected way. For, for many of us, it might be all, all of host pipes of <laughs> contamination coming. <laughs> but even if a person is a sincere sadhaka and is trying to avoid, but still there are leakages of contamination coming. The, what he sees, what he hears, what his desires are, it is still there. It is, it is slowly getting leaked into our consciousness. We need to purify it, purify it, purify it, so that at end of the life, if we are not, I repeat, if we are not 100% pure, not even 99%, 100% pure, we don't have entry to the spiritual world. And when I say spiritual world, it's not that we're talking about a physical situation, but we will not achieve the lotus feet of Krishna will not achieve. Krishna is wanting 100% pure. So that is why Srila Prabhupada has given us from the International Society for Contaminated Consciousness, he has given us the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. <clears throat> it, is, it, is, it is consciousness that is very, very important. So much contamination. Just, just I was speaking to Govind Prabhu just few minutes back. Just in the next two days, you know, we are going to have the year end and beginning of the next year. In one sense, from the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, it doesn't have any significance, zero significance. It doesn't mean anything. Let's not create a big hype about year end. It doesn't mean anything to us. But yes, for people, it's a big celebration. But how are they going to do it? I don't know the numbers. It will be known to you very soon. Uh, from some talks that are going to come. But there's a gallons and gallons and liters and liters of intoxication which will be consumed. Contamination through intoxication will be the slogan for 31st. So much. I mean, I don't know the numbers, some number that he quoted. Huge numbers of people who are going to get heavily intoxicated. And that's contamination. And that's how they're going to welcome the new year with a contaminated, degraded, putrefied consciousness. And that's the situation of the world, my dear friends. And that's the place that we are staying. How can we think that we will not be affected? We will be affected if we are not regularly. And when I say regularly, means every minute getting inoculated from this contaminated situation that we are all staying. That is why these demigods are very, very kindly telling us how to really do that. We need to do, we need to do that. Hmm? So he says the two powerful ways is to hear Krishna Katha. Shin Vitha Svakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridhyantas Abhadrani. So many verses, first canto, second chapter, verses of the verses, Nashta Prayeshu, Abhadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Ruttama Shloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. So many verses telling us the importance of hearing Krishna Katha. <clears throat> and Shila, and it is, it, is, it is what Srila Prabhupada said, that what does it mean to hear Krishna Katha? It is explained here. Vyavashat Vika Buddhi, A.K.A. Kuru Nandana. And Prabhupada very, very wonderfully took the instruction or took the inspiration from Vishwanath Chakravi Thakur and said, what does it mean to be one-pointed in your determination is to hear and to make the instructions of your spiritual master as your life and soul. To hear from the spiritual master, Guru Mukha, Padma Vakya, Chitita Koryo Akya, Arana Koryo Mane Asha. That is what will create the nectar in our hearts. So, when you talk about nectar, it, it will be interesting to, to learn something from, from personalities who are collecting nectar. There is something what is called biomimicry. What biomimicry really means is that the humans learned how to make a plane when, by seeing the birds. Similarly, we learned how to make a, a ship or a boat by seeing how fishes swim. So this is what is called biomimicking. 
that you learn something from some personality, then you use it for your own benefit. Similarly, if we want to learn how to collect nectar, we need to really learn, we need to really biomimic the bees. Right? If you want to learn to fly, you do, because you can't fly, so you learn from the bird, and you make a plane accordingly. And that's what they did. And that's why we have the plane. So what do we learn from the bees? Uh, the bees are, are, are wonderful personalities who are constantly uh, seeking nectar. And here it is explained that Krishna Katha hmm, is, is, like, is, is not like, it is nectar. So we as, as sadhakas, how we can be biomimicking the bees so that we can really collect this nectar will be interesting to discuss. So here, you know, we see for the next few minutes, we'll be just trying to learn from the bee. We have to learn. We are students everywhere. The child is the father of man, as we say. So we are always supposed to learn. And we can learn from every... We have this example of the 24 gurus in the Bhagavatam. 24 or 25? 24. 24 gurus, right? So 24 gurus where, you know, his guru was the elephant, his guru was the bees, his guru was the moth. Similarly, what do we learn from the bee? The first thing that we learn is that they always are looking for flower bearing nectar and never ever found near filth and dirt. Always. Have you ever seen, ever, ever, you shoot a photo and we will pay you a million dollars for that or a million rupees, whatever. Shoot a photo where you find the bee hovering around. You might just fly over it, but not hovering over a dirt or a filth. Never. Because they are always seeking nectar and they always want to go where there is nectar. They are not bothered where, where there is filth. They don't, they don't really care. They are busy. Busy like the bee, as we say, right? Busy like the bee. They're busy searching for nectar, constantly going from flower to flower to flower. And obviously when they go from flower to flower to flower over different places, they must be passing places with filth and dirt. They don't really bother. They don't even look at it. They don't really make a judgment. Oh, it's so dirty. They are not bothered. They don't have time because they're just so busy collecting the nectar. Similarly, we as sadhakas, we should be constantly, constantly looking for the nectar of Krishna Katha. Where is the Krishna Katha going on? What, what, oh, here is, this is the place where I get Krishna understanding. Here is the place I will get Krishna inspiration. Here is the place I will get some, some, some more dedication to Krishna. I must go there. Book distribution. Yes, I will feel inspired to do this. So I, I must do this. Oh, I want to hear the Bhagavatam. Oh, I want to address the deities. Wherever we get inspiration for serving Krishna is what we need to do. And we need to ignore the places. Because as we do our services, we will pass through contaminated places. And contaminated people and contaminated thoughts, but we don't give heed to it. They will come. We don't really give a heed to it. We we should be, as we say, busy collecting nectar. If we have because you know, if you want to get into Maya, you need to have time to get into Maya, right? If you don't have time, you don't I mean if you want to get into Maya, you need to have time. You need to have some time to get into Maya. But if you don't have time, where is the question of going to Maya? Because your whole time is consumed being Krishna, conscious. That's why it is said that we need to be busy serving Krishna 24 hours a day. 24 hours. Everything. What is that word? Savai mana Krishna padar vindayo, right? That he used, Amrish Maharaj used all his senses. Every senses. He was just so busy serving Krishna through all his senses and there was no Maya. So that is the first thing, to be busy looking for nectar constantly and not getting diverted by the, by the diversions of contamination, which we will come across. The second is they know where, yeah, this is very interesting. You know, so many times, you know, we have, we have developed the, the perfection of developing an artificial flower which looks like a real flower. I mean, recently I saw champak flowers on the, in the market. So they are completely artificial. They are made of some foam. But they look so real. So we might get little, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, bewildered or we might get a little confused. Oh, is this real? Or? But have you ever seen a bee hovering over an artificial flower? Ever. I mean, not, not possible. It may look, but you will never. 
you put a flower next to it, artificial flower and a real flower, the bee will just shh, go to the real flower. Right? Because the bee can identify where is the real nectar. And what is, which looks like nectar, which is not nectar. Which looks like some, some, something which will give me, which, which, which is not. So sadhaka, many a times we'll come across situations which will look Krishna conscious, but it will be like a trap laid by Maya, just like the elephant. You know, it just walks and boom, it attracts to the female elephant, and not knowing that it's a big pit, they cover it with grass. So he said, it could be a trap in the form of some some. You know, a, a Siddhantic understanding. Many, many years back in the late, in 19, late 80s or 90, yeah, early 90s, you know, somebody just told me, oh, you should go to this particular person. I was just uh, two years or maybe one and a half years old devotee. Uh, just came to know who are the Goswamis. Just came to know, you know, uh, what is what is Gaudiya Sampradaya. And, and they said, oh, you should go to this person and you should... Uh, you know, here, and he speaks purely about the from the Goswamis, from the Satsandarbhas, and from the Goswami literatures and everything. So it looks beautifully like a beautiful real flower, huh? but it was a complete sahajyavad, complete sahaj. Of course, luckily I didn't go. Huh? So, so a, a sadhaka needs to be very sure of what is real flower. And what appears to be a flower. That is what we learn from the bee. And that we can learn from proper association, from proper studies of the scriptures. So what to, to, to discern, to have the viveka buddhi, discriminatory intelligence, to discern what is right and what is wrong. The second thing that we learn from the bee. The third thing is that you know, when we see the bee, what 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 is it? The what is what feelings is the bee uh, reflecting by its presence? Uh, when we see the bee, it it mainly reflects the feeling of happiness. A bee is it 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 permeates happiness, or rather, it is symbolic of happiness, isn't it? A bee is just it, 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 you know, like sometimes we talk about a donkey, uh, and what a donkey symbolize? Uh, stupidity, right? <laughs> So, so everything symbolizes something. A donkey, uh, a buffalo symbolizes laziness. Uh, just sitting at one place, and right. So, I mean, you can sim- you can connect to something. Similarly, what does the bee say? Symbolize activity, happiness. There is no room for doubts or complaints. And many a times I've, uh, we have seen, as we are sadhakas and we are trying to get the nectar, you know, one thing which, which we get trapped in many times hmm, is the tendency to constantly find faults and complain. Hmm. And because of that, we lose our happiness. Because Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. But many times we ask devotees, are you happy? They lose their happiness and we find what's going wrong. Why are devotees not happy? Because they just get into this whole whole network of finding faults and, f- and complaining. Oh, the guru has given a beautiful class. Oh, it's a great nectar. We must, we must re- hear the nectar. But why was I not there for the class? Finding a fault. You understand what I'm saying? Is it more important to hear the class, however you get it, or to f- first figure out why was I not there for the class? Why are people discriminating? Why are people, f- why are a small group of people are hearing? Yes, it might be, it, it could be a managerial discussion on that front, but let's not get bogged down by just managerial discussion, but let's focus on the essence. That yes, this is the nectar and I must just imbibe it. But many times it's become a style to just complain, to just opine. And not only in the spiritual, I mean, this is everywhere. I mean, when we go across the world, oh, the government should do this and government should do that and why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Just opinion giving. 
this complaint finding. And because of that, I tell you, I have seen we are, we are just losing the positivity in our Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is about being positive. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purnash Purna Mudha Chite Purnash Purna Madha Ya Purna Meva Vashishite. The Krishna is perfect and complete and all positive and everything emanating from Krishna is all perfect, all positive. And if we are servants of Krishna, we should be positive people. We should be positive thinking people. But Maya systematically puts us in situations where we get into this this, this whole uh, network of complaining about things. Why things are not happening properly here and there. And, and we, it just becomes our second nature. And then we lose our core Krishna consciousness. The core Krishna consciousness is carry on with life. There is so much to achieve and so much less time. We don't have time to really waste on complaints. There is such a short time and a huge amount of unearth and nivriti to be done. <laughs> right? How many years do we have and large quantities of unearth and nivriti still to be done? Where is the time of complaining? Why waste time? If, if, if we all know that there is less time you have, will you just spend time in finding faults with things? No, you will not. Right? In, we have seen I mean, I say, karo, karo, charo, karo, charo. Let's carry on with work. Is it not? Is not the, if, if there's less time, okay, do it. Do it the best you can. Carry on. Let the work go on. Right? So, so another, uh, disp- it's, it's, it's a matter of disposition that we're talking about here. The disposition of the bee is just always positive, going from positive, positivity. Just, just, just filled with positivity. And the devotee needs to also remember how to be positive because no matter how much problems we have on one side, we have much, 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 much more to thank Krishna and be positive on the other side. The fact that we are Krishna's devotees, the fact that we have access to Srimad Bhagavatam, the fact that we have Sangha of so many wonderful devotees and the wonderful temple of, of Iskon of worldwide, Itself is a profuse enough reason which, which overpowers and overbalances uh, the reason to complain. Yes, you may have reasons to complain. Nothing is perfect in this material world. And you are complaining, that means you are showing something which is obvious. <laughs> nothing is per- in, nothing perfect. And by complaining, what you are showing is, is showing the obvious thing. What's so great about it? If you show something is obvious, I mean, have you done something great? No. You have just some, done something which is obvious. Something is dirty and you point, this is dirty. Yes, it is dirty. It is obviously dirty. It is, we can all see it is dirty. But you point fingers and waste time showing it is dirty. What's the big thing you've done? But in that negative environment where the world is, if you find something positive and you say, well, you know, Krishna is positive and let's, let's focus on the positivity of life. That's nectar. Nectar means positive. Krishna Katha is, should create positivity in our hearts. Should create more confidence. Should create more enthusiasm in our hearts. Utsaha, nishaya, dhairyas, tat, tat, karma, pravartana. Three things that Rupa Gautam says. Six things, but six things. Utsaha, nishaya, all positive things. But if you see the practice of Krishna consciousness is not creating positivity, then there's nothing wrong with the process of Krishna consciousness, but there's something wrong in the way you are performing your process of Krishna consciousness. It's a clear-cut sign that something is wrong. Because Krishna consciousness, by nature, the practice should create positivity, should create positive feelings in our hearts, and should create enthusiasm. If it is not, then don't blame the externals, blame the internals. Because there's nothing else, nothing you can do with the externals. Even if it is true, what can you do about the externals? Nothing. But you can do something about the internals in your heart. <clears throat> and, and, the, and the last thing, the thing that we learn is the bees have a fantastic community living. Of course, there's a whole, I mean, uh, this whole, uh, whole discussion we can do about what we can learn from the bees, the whole the way they live in community. I mean, the bees have fantastic social beings. There's a whole section which we can spend another few hours discussing. Just learning from the bee. Because I've been trying to focus on the bee for the last one month. So that's why a lot of 
You know, you know something? If there was no bees, this, this world would not be existing. You know that? that? That's a fact. Because if there were no bees, there would not be any plants. But there would not be any cross-pollination. So how every, even the insignificant bee is so important. I'm, this is just the by the way. Yeah? And so much things to learn from the bee. And bee teaches us to be positive. <laughs> Anyways, so, so there's a whole bee which is, we just, they, they live in a community, they're all working towards community, they all work and there's the queen bee, of course it's a whole different discussion, but how we can learn that by, by staying in the community, it is not easy, but they still live in a community with that thousands and thousands and thousands of bees, but they're all working towards collecting the nectar and that should be community spirit. So, you know, what we should, what we should be understanding is, sorry, we're getting time up, is how, what should be the real hearing? The hearing should be very intense. It is, it is nectar. But because if we don't have a proper background when we come to hear, we come with a negative spirit, we come with a, with a very, very morose mood, then the nectar will not be tasted by us. But if we come with enthusiasm, we come with positivity. I say, I want to hear Krishna Katha today. Then you will taste the nectar. Then that nectar will really give, give rise to wonderful uh, uh, you know, fragrance in your Krishna consciousness. The fragrance of Krishna consciousness will be f- over flooding your existence and not the filth of contaminated, putrefying Maya. That's very important. And what is... Of course, we don't have time, but how do we hear? Krishna Katha has been glorified here in the mood of King Kula Shekhar. We all know the story, how he heard the Ramayan, as if it is happening. And he got so excited, King Kula Shekhar. They were, they were narrating the Ramayan and, and, and he, heard, he heard that uh, Surpanka is there and, and there is a, at, at Janasthan and, <clears throat> and there was a whole army of Kar and Dushan. He took his army and he, was, he, was, he, wanted, he was right in Srirangam. And he wanted to go all the way to Nasik to fight. And this happened millions of years ago. <laughs> but he was just feeling that, yes, this, this was his enthusiasm. The, 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 the ministers had to create a whole plan of a whole army coming from the opposite side and say, well, Ram has won the war. There's no problem. Then he said, oh, Jai. Ram has won the war. Otherwise, he was going to go all the way to, <laughs> to Nasik and fight a war which, fought, which was fought millions of years ago. And then they made a rule that don't... Sh- Tell any story which is sad in Ramayana. Tell all positive stories. Otherwise, the king gets excited. Because he hears with such enthusiasm, with such intensity. But one day, the reciter was not available. His son went. <laughs> you know the story. And, and the son told the story about how, uh, how Sita was kidnapped. And again, King Krishnakar became excited. Oh, sh- sh- sh. He, he, he went uh, to uh, the, the place. Of, he was going to go to Sri Lanka and fight. And he actually went to the ocean. He, was, he took this sword and, and he went right in the ocean and he was getting drowned in the ocean and the people were thinking, my God, what do we do now? Can you imagine this personality's intensity? And that's why when that verse was speak, spoken, that, what is this famous verse? Krishna Tvadiya Pada Pankaj Panjarantam That verse with Prabhupada so glorifies that let the swarm of my mind be entangled in the network of your that was this intensity. That's why Prabhupada's favorite verse was that. But why? Because that was the quality of his hearing. And then he was right in the, only his sword was seen. He was, he was I mean, it, in one sense it looks crazy. And the people also thought this, this king is crazy. But what happened? In his craziness, Lord Ram and Sita personally came, manifested in front of him, took him out. I said, the war is... What? Sita is back with me. Oh, Jai. <laughs> but Ram came personally to give him darshan. Isn't it worth to be crazy like him? Because Krishna comes to only crazy people. Either you be crazy like Jagai Madhai or you be crazy like otherwise Krishna doesn't come, come easily. Of course, I'm not telling all of us to be crazy. But the point that we need to learn from this is the intensity of hearing of King Kula Shekhar and we should bow at his lotus feet for teaching us this beautiful example of what it means to hear intensely. Because the Guru instructed that you should hear Ramayana every day. This is exactly what the Bhagavad is telling us. Hearing 
krishna katha on the instruction of the spiritual master this is the this is the nectar giving nectar bearing river which can flow through our ears and enter into our hearts and purify the consciousness just like the ganges uh, finally when bhagirath was successful it flew it flew down it flowed down i'm sorry flowed down and finally it covered the ashes and for 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 lifetimes this the ancestors of bhagirath were in ashes form and they came to life the ganges whenever wherever she flows it brings dead people to life similarly our dead consciousness our purified consciousness will come to life when the nectar of krishna katha will flow in our hearts but for that we should allow it to flow and we should have the enthusiasm for it to allow it to be flowing and the second thing which the verse is, the verse says just give me 2 minutes i'm really sorry for getting over time the second and the thing which is mentioned is the nectar of krishna's charnamrita as the devotees take shelter of these two things they take shelter of krishna's nectar in past time through their years and they take shelter of krishna's charnamrit i mean the ganges or the jamuna is explained in the beautiful purport uh, we take shelter by taking by bathing so you know i was just uh, you know with uh, with somebody i was i was in the uk and uh, i was traveling uh, you know and there, there was one uh, british person I said hey, what what do you have in 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 india what you guys are very proud of <laughs> so uh, so of course i said because what 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 the world thinks the india has is poverty dirt snake charmers <laughs> uh, you know all, all sorts of tantric things and that's what is shown in the all the videos and everything you know so so i said i don't know what i said but none of what you have what we have huh? we have the ganges with us hmm? tere paas kya hai you know the famous thing yeah mere paas meri maa hai right so we have our mother ganges with nobody in the world has why because it's only flowing doesn't make doesn't mean that we become proud indians but we become grateful indians we become grateful that yes we have all the beautiful rivers which are charnamrit of krishna flowing in this land and people from all over the world they come to take shelter of this beautiful charnamrit we should be proud of that and the least we can do the least we can do is to not contaminate this holy rivers material contamination because if you see the budget that the government has allotted to cleansing this holy rivers because of our stupidity and not valuing these rivers is 27600 crores is required to clean something which gets contaminated because as we said originally in the beginning of the class anything that is there in the material world if we don't protect it it will get contaminated hmm? so let us be proud let us be grateful to krishna that we have access and not only access but have understanding of the glories of krishna katha and this nectar in rivers we value them only by hearing we can value the rivers otherwise these rivers appear to be ordinary but when we enter the ganges we understand oh this is directly from vaman washing the lotus feet of vaman dev jamuna this is directly charnamrit of krishna ganges is the same place where chaitanya mahaprabhu performed his past times and did all his and his his feet was washed right so let us really value this and let us really understand the nectar so much nectar is available to us but let us be let us be nectar seekers and let us not be poison distributors hmm? in collecting nectar let us not end up distributing poison poison of negativity of our own experiences poison of negativity of our own anarthas in our heart but let us distribute nectar and let us help the world to be a more positive and a more happy place thank you very much hari krishna